Clashes erupting between Antifa and police in Washington, D.C. Protesters even threatening to burn down the city. This as new squad member Cori Bush, who criticized the U.S. Capitol rioters, now comes under fire for comments she made about an inmate uprising at a St. Louis jail over the weekend. The congresswoman defended those rioters, tweeting, a riot is the language of the unheard. Dr. MLK Jr., I want to talk to my constituents in the window. Their lives and their rights must be protected. My team and I, she says, are working to ensure that the urgent needs of people who are incarcerated are not ignored. End of her tweet there on it. Jason Rance is a Seattle radio talk show host who has witnessed Antifa rioting firsthand uh, in his own area. And it's from that perspective that you can look at this and say, what? Well, I can look at it and say that Cori Bush is a total fraud, uh, unless suddenly she's decided to change her position on impeachment. What we've seen for so long is that Democrats who have stayed silent on BLM-related violence and Antifa rioting is that they condone the violence when it serves a political purpose that they can get behind. The second that there's any violence that could threaten their power or a position that they take, well, all of a sudden, it's the end of the world. All of us should be condemning all political violence, period, because political violence begets more political violence. When you take any yes. position that says, well, OK, we can justify this. Well, guess what? Anyone can justify political violence. That's why they turn to political violence. And I don't think it takes a deep thinker. So in other words, anyone from the squad can figure this out. Anyone can just say, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this. That's a dangerous line of thinking. And we saw it in St. Louis. And obviously, we saw it yet again in D.C. I want to move to something that you wrote yesterday, an op-ed. And in it, Jason, you were explaining how Antifa uses Twitter to threaten you and the media. Quote, Democrats don't even acknowledge Antifa exists, let alone lobby Twitter to take action. Consequently, media members are at risk when we bring you images of Antifa anarchy, end quote. Why do you say that? Why'd you write that? Yeah, so what ends up happening is someone who actually goes into the Antifa mobs to try to get a better sense of what's going on, they've got scouts that are there on the ground trying to make sure that people like me don't actually film their vandalism. But what ends up happening on Twitter primarily is that there are folks who are mining Twitter to see whether or not people like me are posting videos that show faces of people who are committing uh, vandalism or worse. What they end up doing is they will send out images and they'll hashtag uh, with certain keywords that folks on the ground are paying attention to and monitoring, showing your name, showing your photo and telling people that they are, you are there in the crowd. They do that with the intent of getting folks who are there to harass you, to threaten you. And I've seen it happen. When I was in Tacoma at the riot, it happened to me specifically, where someone had said that I'm there filming people's faces as they're vandalizing. Now, to be clear, I was. I 100% was there filming people who were breaking storefronts and burning flags. That is part of our job. Committing that crimes. is actually well, a story. the last one isn't a crime. Well, the last one wasn't so, a crime, but when you're going ahead and committing these kinds of vandalism, we have the right to film and we should be highlighting it. So, so Jason, we call them anarchists because they are. What is the end goal here? They, they, are they le legitimately trying to undo what we have as America? And why would they think that they can so, so th there's, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of different thinking behind some of these folks. Some people do it just because they want to. They like to see the chaos. There are others who believe that they need to tear down these systems that we have, systems that they believe are systems built on white supremacy mm. and built upon oppression, and they have to rebuild them in an image that they personally approve of. The reason why they feel like they can do it is because, let's be clear, they've been allowed to do it. These things don't happen in a bubble. They've been happening for a matter of eight to nine months now with little consequences. You've got city's attorney all around the country who have not been prosecuting these crimes. You've got politicians like a Cori Bush who go ahead and defend them. And you've got no political will coming from Democrats to call them out with any sense of consistency. It doesn't just happen in, in this bubble. It's happening over and over and over again. Jason Rance, always appreciate you on the program. Thank you very much.